Hi, my name is Maximiliano Fertman. I'm a web developer with more than 25 years of experience. Every browser today is offering us a lot of web capabilities that makes the web platform really powerful. In this course, we're going to see different APIs that you may have not known about, including geolocation, Bluetooth, accessing external hardware, and speech. Join me as we explore the fun and exciting things the web can do. We have a section here for microphone, okay? Well, I will show you this code in a minute, but here I will I already have a console logo, so we can see this in action. And by the way, here are the keywords that I'm looking for. Hey cooking next, hey cooking previous. By the way, I don't need hey cooking. I can just say next. But just because I'm also speaking here to you, okay, I don't want the app to get crazy. So um, let's see, let me open the console so we can see the output of this. So let's start cooking. It's full screen, but the dev tool is still there, so which is, which is uh, okay. Safari doesn't have that option. When Safari goes full screen, the dev tools goes to a different uh, desktop, which is complicated for, for presentation purposes. So how to enable that? Well, there is a microphone icon there. So if I click there, it first asks me for microphone permission. Can you see that at the top? I will say allow, okay? And now it's listening. Can you see it there and there <laughs> in the console? And I can say again, hey cooking next. Hey cooking next. Hey cooking exit. It works. And it works pretty well, okay? So for a cooking app, it works pretty well. So um, the only thing you need is you need to enable that, and then you can continue listening forever while your page is there, kind of still hearing the user and the text. And it also can receive text in different languages. Right now, uh, it's English. I'm not going to change everything here, but if I try it here and, and change that to Spanish, that's the only language I know. Um, so it's not going to change anything, but at least si hablo en español, funciona. That's right, by the way. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Uh, it works. Working with WebXR, we are not going to get too deep with this. I will show you something I think that is simpler for the first approach to this. But you just call navigator.xr dot request session. And there are three kinds of sessions today available. It depends on the device. Immersive VR, that means you have a headset for VR. Immersive AR, you have a headset that can also look what's in your real environment. Or inline, inline. Inline can be used with, a, with your phone without any device attached. Just using the camera and sometimes some sensors from the camera. It's up to the hardware. So um, Apple has created a format that is called AR Quick Look, Augmented Reality Quick Look. I'm not sure if you have seen this before, where you create an anchor, so a link, with the rel AR, and you point to an USDC file. That is a 3D model with metadata for augmented reality, such as the, um, how that, uh, that element fits in the real world, such as the real size of that element. That 3D model doesn't count for the real world. Well, this is a 3D model with more metadata. On Android and Chrome, they, instead of applying this non-standard way of doing things, they have created something known as model viewer. Model Viewer is a web component that you can add to your website. And internally, it will use the Apple's implementation or WebXR to offer the same solution. So it's a library, okay? But internally, it's, it makes the same code compatible, the same model compatible with iOS and Android. Probably you don't understand what that means yet. So let me show you what this is. I have here the modelviewer.dev website. Let me refresh. 
So you see the, the, the experience. So the right experience is that I, I'm, I'm seeing that, that armchair, and I can view that in my space. Can you see that view in your space? So view in your space, let's see if that, I'm in the Chrome, yeah, I'm in Chrome. Because I already granted permission. I wanted to show you the permission for that. Yeah, can you see that, that permission augmented reality is already allowed. Let me reset it so you see it from scratch. So this is the what you see, that this website, so it's a capability that lets me create a 3D map of my surroundings. I will say allow. And now, probably you've seen this on iPhone as well, where it's asking me to move around so it can actually put, this is our real environment here in front of Masters. It looks nice, it's actually pretty similar to the one, the real one you have there. I can even rotate it. Okay. And actually, it's the real size of that particular thing. Okay. Pretty cool, right? So, well, this doesn't, it's augmented reality, but you don't need any, any device, just a website pointing to, to a model. So, I have here with me Bluetooth lights. I mean, it can be any light. But again, this is not a standard service. So, we need to actually understand how that works. And actually, I Google the name of these lights, and I tried to find if someone has already understood how this works. And I found a Python library to work with these lights with all the services IDs and characteristic IDs, so then I can use it in my code. Let's look at the code. Let's go and look at the code. Bluetooth. And actually, because it was so complicated, I created a new file, btlights.js, bluetoothlight.js. So look at this. This is how a service ID looks like. This is the service ID for these lights. And then the lights have different characteristics for changing the color, for checking the power, for whatever they have. And they have one characteristic ID, like that one. And by the way, who is defining this? The manufacturer. They can use any value. So there is no list of uh, IDs by manufacturer on, on a Bluetooth foundation website. No. So um, it's just that. So I'm requesting a device. And here you can see the difference. I can ask for um, a device with a prefix Goovy. That's the name. That's the brand. And I can ask for optional services. I want a device with that ID. But I don't need that. So I can just say, I want all the devices. I want the device with that name. Or I just want all the devices. So after I have the device, okay, I have different functions. Turn on, turn off, more brightness, less brightness. And look at that. That's the bytes that I need to send for that special operation. Turn on, turn off. And it's calling bright data. Bright data is that code that is connecting to the device, getting the service, getting the characteristic, converting that string into an actual array of bytes for JavaScript, and finally writing that value to the characteristic. So it gets complex. You need experience working with binary data. And also to understand what is this. Well, this comes from a manual or from someone that already sniffed the device to understand how that works. In fact, the last digit, it's actually, in this case, a digit that is for error checking. It's a check checksum. And you need to understand which protocol they're using for that to actually make that work. So let's see if we can uh, call because right now we are exporting this turn on, turn off from here. And now on our app.js, we have an alert timer finished, where we do several stuff. For example, when the timer finishes, I'm calling a rumble on my gamepad. So then you will hear, when the timer finishes, you will hear a rumble. And then if we do have a Bluetooth connected, I'm sending different messages with set timeout. So that means in zero seconds, or right now, 
300 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds, and doing all these kind of chain commands to the, to the Bluetooth device. So let's try this. So I'm going to start cooking. I'm going to the next step. That's the one that lets me add a timer. And I'm going to connect both the gamepad and the lights. And I'm going to add a timer. Let's wait for it. And now we have alerts everywhere, everywhere saying, hey, 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 your eggs, hey, your, your, your chicken is ready.